Welcome to session 11. In this session, we're going to explore how we produce electricity using electromagnetism. Now, before we get into the fundamentals, I'd like to do kind of a fun demonstration for you. I'm going to send a magnet down this tube, and we're going to light these LEDs in sequence. Okay? Now, to make it a little more graphic, I'm going to turn down the lights. We'll start with the north pole being the first pole that enters the tube, okay? And now watch how the lights light up. They just light up in sequence, one after the other. I'm going to do it one more time. There it is, one right after the other. Now I'm going to push the south pole in first. See if you notice a difference. Kind of flickering a little bit, isn't it? Let's slow it way down and see if you notice what's going on with the south pole going through. You notice how it's different, isn't it? I'll slow down the north pole. And I'll slow down the south pole. Okay. Let's turn the lights on and explore what's going on. What we have here, the tube is going through a bunch of coils. The coils are behind these pipe clamps. The coils with lots of turns on them. And as the magnet passes through, with the north end down, we get a positive pulse and a negative pulse. Each coil does that, plus, minus. Now, LEDs, well, LED stands for light emitting diode. Diode is the special word there. Diodes only let electricity go in one direction. Light emitting diodes only work with electricity going in one direction. In the other direction, they don't do anything. And the way I have these wired is the front pair of lights for each coil respond to a positive pulse. They don't respond to the negative pulse. But the second pair of lights with that coil respond to the negative pulse. I've just wired them in, you know, backwards. And that's why when we put the north pole in, you get this light, that light, this light, that light, just steady all the way down. But when I put the south pole down, the first pulse is a negative pulse followed by a positive pulse. So the second pair light up first before the first pair in each one of these. So that's why you see this hesitation all along the way. Let's put away the magnet. All right, so we've got magnets and coils interacting, producing a mag uh, electricity. Now, you remember that I used this coil, this heavy coil of wire, to do a number of experiments. And I would hook up power to the leads, run electricity through it, produce a magnetic field. What if I fill this thing with a magnetic field? You suppose we could get electricity out? Let's try. So we'll hook this up here, and this here. So I've connected the coil to a number of devices that would produce some kind of response if I produce electricity here by filling it with magnetism. 
I have a little meter where the needle can move. I have LEDs. Again, they're, they're hooked up in opposite polarity, so only one of them will light up. And then we have a motor that would respond. So let's fill this with a magnetic field. I'm going to put these two magnets in here. Fill it with a magnetic field and nothing happens. Hmm. Well, what's our problem? Well, if you recall, with this device, we didn't just put a magnet in there. The magnet was moving. So I have a magnet on the end of this rod, and I'll put it in here. If I just hold it in there, nothing's going to happen. I'm not sure where the position is, but it's not going to do anything. But if I move it back and forth, the lights light up. So maybe our problem over here is that we need to move that magnet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it out and we'll see what happens. I'll pull it out quickly and you watch the devices there. Oh, all right. When I pulled it out, the motor turned that way. These lights lit up and the needle moved toward the plus. Now I'm going to plunge the magnet into the coil and we'll see what happens. That time this lit up, the motor went that way and the needle went to the negative. So if I keep moving the magnet relative to the coil, and I could be moving either one, it's the relative motion that matters, I'm generating electricity. Let's take a look at a diagram that kind of gives us an idea of what's going on. So obviously these are the magnets and there's a north pole on the outside outside here and the south pole in the middle so we have a magnetic field that's going inward like that. And then the copper coils are represented by the orange color. Now you recall our, our second left-hand rule, the Lorentz force, that if you've got a magnetic field across like this and you have electrons that are sitting in all this copper and they're going back and forth this way, then you're going to get a force out of the page and into the page. Okay? So let's... Uh, maybe a little bit easier to visualize that in three dimensions with the actual coil. So let me turn this around here like this. And uh, the diagram showed you there are magnetic fields across here and across here. And as this goes through, it's cutting through, it's cutting through the coil. Now, this weighs seven pounds, this weighs two pounds, this is connected to other stuff. So I really don't want to hold the magnet and go like that with the coil, okay? So what I want you to do is realize and imagine <laughs> that this going like that is equivalent to the coil going up and down through the magnetic field. It is the relative motion that matters. It doesn't matter which one of them is moving. So to explain this, I'm going to do a, a thought experiment with the magnet just kind of sitting here like this and moving the coil up and down. Remember, the magnetic field is from the outside to the inside. So let's refer to our uh, second left-hand rule. The magnetic field, we agreed, was in, into the coil from the outside. As the coil's coming up, through that magnetic field, as indicated by the thumb, the forces on the electrons are in that direction over here. On this side, the magnetic field is in that way toward the middle. As the coil goes up, the electrons are going up through a magnetic field, and the force on them on this side is that way. So we've got forces on the wires 
like that on opposite sides, but they're connected to each other. So they're helping each other. And you've got a bunch of turns that all of that adds up and gives us a voltage that's useful to actually do something. And that's why when we move the magnet back and forth through the coil, we are able to produce electricity. Now, you know, this is, this is very fortunate that relative motion, the relative motion between a conductor, and in this case, the conductor's in a coil, and a magnetic field produces a voltage. Because we already have, we already have a device that has those characteristics where we can have relative motion between the magnetic field and the copper wi wire. You'll recall that this was a motor in one of our earlier demonstrations. It was the basis of our commutator motor. And I'll run it for you again. Okay. Notice that it has, there's a magnetic field and there's a bunch of copper wire free to move, not up and down, but around and around. Now I'm going to connect this little motor here to the brushes. The other side was already connected. And I'm going to turn this by hand and watch what the little motor does. The motor's acting like a generator. Well, actually, motors and generators have pretty much the same parts. And it may not always be practical, but you can convert almost any motor into a generator and any generator into a motor. Now, sometimes it's not very easy. Sometimes it takes a special kind of electricity. And sometimes the generator is not independent. But when we have this kind of situation, that is, I have a permanent magnet for the field, and I have a commutator rotor, then I can go either way. As you saw here, it can either be a motor or a generator. We also can do that if we have an electromagnet for the field, as long as there is some residual, residual uh, magnetism here so that it generates, this generates a little bit of electricity which gets fed into this in the right direction and they just kind of keep building one after the other, increasing and increasing their, um, their voltage until it feels like the motor thinks it's got a field like this, a, a powerful uh, magnetic field for the rotor to spin in. Too much information. <laughs> okay, so I've got uh, these two motors that are built with permanent magnets for the field and a commutator motor. And I want to show you that they're not connected mechanically. You can see the shafts coming out of the end of the motor. They are not touching. That's why I have this little block of wood in there to show you there is no connection mechanically between the two. The only thing that connects the two are those two blue wires. Now, if I spin this motor here, Watch what this motor does. This one acts like a generator when I spin it, and it produces electricity to turn that one. I'm going to turn it around and spin this one now, 
and it acts like a generator. And I haven't changed. I didn't rebuild anything. I didn't do anything. I just, I'm just spinning it, and it's acting like a generator in one case, a motor in the other case. So um, over here, I have a uh, motor built just like these with a permanent magnet field and a commutator rotor. Let's turn on these meters. And there's a little bit of friction here, but it's not too hard to turn. Theoretically, we could get rid of most of this friction. We could build it better. Now right now I'm not generating any power. Let's zoom in a little bit on these meters so you can actually read the numbers. There we go. Okay. So I'm producing a little over 10 volts right now. No amps. That means I'm not really producing any power. Because volts times amps equals power in watts. But if amps are zero, I'm producing zero watts. Now I'm going to turn this bank of lights on. So I'm flowing an amp times 10 volts is 10 watts. It's harder to turn. I'm having to work now. Turn on the second bank. 2 amps times uh, 10 volts. I'm claiming it. That's 20 watts. Third bank, whoops, third bank, three amps, about nine volts, 27 watts. This is hard work. And that's how we generate electricity. Not necessarily with a piece of equipment like this, but this kind of lets you see how we generate electricity. We have relative motion between magnetic fields and conductors. So I hope you enjoyed today's presentation and uh, I'll see you next time. Take care.